Hey everyone, Venki here and welcome to I'm Gizmo Geek. If you have an Android TV at your place, here are some cool accessories you can buy that would be really useful in making the most out of your Android TV. Some of these accessories can be used with other smart TVs too. I will leave a link to all these accessories in the description, so do check them out. If you have an Android TV that's running on the Android TV version 9 or above, you can simply connect a USB web camera like this one and make video calls using Google Duo app. This is the OnePlus TV camera that costs 2499 but there are other options too like MeTV camera. I will leave a link to the supported ones in the description. The OnePlus TV camera comes with dual mics and privacy protection shutter. You can check my video on how to make video calls using Duo on Android TV. This is how Duo's interface looks like with the contacts being synced with your Google account. Simply select the contact and tap on video call to connect with your friends and family on the big screen. If you have the OnePlus TV Q and U series, you can even capture photos or videos with the webcam using the inbuilt camera app on the TV. It can be pretty useful if you want to take a group selfie when someone visits your place. If there's one thing that I love about the LG TVs, then it's the Magic Remote. The Magic Remote has a gyroscope inbuilt and you can just move the remote for the cursor on the TV to move. This Air Remote tries to do something similar. It has inbuilt gyroscope and works on two AAA batteries. It comes with a USB dongle that can be connected to the USB port of the TV and it automatically pairs. I got this for 849 from Amazon and it works both as a regular TV remote and also as an AirMOS. In the regular TV remote mode, it functions very similar to the OnePlus TV remote or any other Android TV remote. You can navigate with the navigation keys, access settings by long pressing menu button, Control volume, access Google Assistant, and even sleep wake up the TV. Now, when you press on this arrow button, it turns into air remote, and all you have to do is move the remote in the air to get the cursor to the location you want, and press the OK button. It isn't obviously as precise and smooth as the LG Magic Remote and does have some issues for scrolling. But it is pretty useful when you have to access apps that are not optimized for the TV platform. The downside of this remote is that the mic isn't great at picking things, back doesn't work with air mouse mode and you cannot access power menu. For under 1000 rupees, I think it's a pretty cool accessory that can act as a secondary remote for your TV. One of the major advantages of having an Android TV over the Samsung or LG TVs is the access to large gaming library. Now, most of these games need a controller to function. You can buy either Bluetooth gaming controller like this one or wireless USB dongle one like this to have some great gaming time. If you are using a USB dongle one, you need to make sure to be slightly closer to the TV for better signal strength. If you like to have some casual gaming on the large screen of the TV without any gaming console, then having a controller will be really useful. This is the Logitech K480 keyboard that works on Bluetooth. You might be wondering why would one need a keyboard with a TV? The reason being the multimedia keys on this keyboard. These give access to a couple of functions that we didn't know existed on the TV. For connecting the keyboard, all you have to do is go to Settings, Accessories and Remote and add as an accessory. Long press the I button on the keyboard and it should go into the pairing mode. Once detected, press the key combo and you are done. All the regular remote functions like Home, Back, Navigation, Volume Control, and along with these regular functions, there are some useful shortcuts like accessing recent apps menu with the F2 button. Keep tapping to scroll through the recent apps and once you stop pressing the button, the app in the selection opens up. I find this really handy. 
There's also the lock key that takes screenshots of the screen on the supported apps. There's also shortcut for play and pause, next and previous for easy media control. Obviously buying this keyboard just for the sake of the TV will be a huge investment. But thankfully this one has a multi-device support so you can easily connect to three devices at a time like your phone and laptop. Who doesn't love an ambience while watching their favorite movies or series? There are very few TVs in the market that come with inbuilt ambience lights. But with the help of these LED strips, we can add some ambience for sure. You get these for around 600 to 900 rupees depending on the length of the LED strip we choose. Though they say they can be directly stick to the TV, believe me, they won't stay. So I use this invisible tape to attach the LEDs on the TV's back as these do not leave any residue on the TV. The LEDs have a local remote control with which you can control the light colors, blinking modes, brightness and power. Just connect the USB cable to the port of your TV and you're good to go. I keep switching between the red and the blue lights which are my favorite. Keep the TV as close to the wall as possible for better reflection of the light. Now many of you still might be having old home theater systems or speakers that do not support HDMI, ARC, optical or Bluetooth to connect with your TV. And most of the Android TVs nowadays do not come with the aux port. So this digital to analog converter helps in building a bridge between these connections. As the TVs have optical ports, we can use an optical cable to connect the converter on one side and on the other side an RCA cable like this depending on the ports of your speaker system. Mine has a 3.5mm jack, so RCA to AUX converter cable helps. And finally power connection to the converter. Once the setup is done, head over to the audio settings of the TV and switch to optical PCM. And the audio will now come through the speakers. Do note that the volume control has to be done through the speaker system only in most cases. So time to revive your old speakers and improve the sound quality of the TV. One major drawback of all the Android TVs out there is the low storage space. They hardly come with 4 to 8 GB usable storage and installing one big game takes up the whole space. You can see that I have only storage left in MBs. So USB stick like this or a portable hard disk like this can be easily connected to the TV and be converted to internal storage. This process expands the storage of the TV, thereby giving an option to move many third-party apps to the added storage and provide extra space for even transferring media files to access locally. You can follow this detailed tutorial I made on how to expand the storage space of your Android TV. Last but not the least, we have the Google Home Mini Smart Speaker. All the latest Android TVs are now coming with far-field mics but it's easy to get similar experience by connecting a Google Home Mini to the same Google account. Most of the functionalities that one can do with the Farfield mic could also be done with the Google Home Mini. Ok Google, open Netflix. Sure, launching Netflix on the OnePlus TV. Ok Google, play some music on OnePlus TV. Ok, music from Spotify. Playing on OnePlus TV. Ok Google, turn on OnePlus TV. Alright, turning off the OnePlus TV. And above that you can use it as a standalone smart speaker. So if you feel you are missing out on the far field features from the new TVs, then this is an accessory you should try out. So that's about it guys, I hope you liked the video and you could find some useful accessories for your Android TV. Let me know in the comments if you find trouble connecting any of the accessories. See you all in the next video.